So the question is how the particular word in the particular language for a visual object, the word which eventually goes to fit the mold or neural store already developed by the infant for that object, is in some way specially appropriate for the object and comes to be recognized uh, as such by the infant. How a word can be appropriate to its meaning leads to the way in which in the history of any language words emerged for particular objects. How did a particular word emerge? At some stage in the history of a human group, a new word emerged for the particular object. This new word came into general use and survived because it seemed the fittest word for the object to members of the original group. In what sense could a word be fit for the object to which it referred? In what sense could the word be said to match the object? Let us consider the perception of any object. For many objects on seeing them, we can, without saying a word, perform a hand and arm movement to indicate the object, a gesture. For example, we can indicate a circle by forming or performing a circle with our arms. For a tree, we can, with some accuracy, even indicate the kind of tree by using our hands and arms. We can indicate other objects by pointing to them, to our head, our foot, our ear, our eye, and so on. Homely visual objects, a bowl, a cup, a plate, can be indicated by miming the particular shape. Other items can be indicated by an appropriate contour, a step, an edge, a hill. For many objects, we can perform actions to indicate the objects to other persons in our group. Objects are represented by patterns of action uh, for which we have acquired the neural representations, motor programs, needed to perform the actions. Once we have in our neural store, our motor memory, the pattern of action representing the object, we can, by a universally available brain process of motor equivalence, transfer this bodily pattern of action to the articulatory system. And here a note, uh, motor equivalence simply means that the same program for an action can executing using one set of joints and muscles can at will be equally well performed using a quite different set of joints and muscles, e.g. signing your name with your foot rather than with your hand. Through motor equivalence, an externally perceivable bodily gesture can become an articulatory gesture, producing a sequence of speech sounds, a unified word equivalent to the action. We can do this because, as considered at stage one ab above, speech sounds are evolutionarily derived from bodily action, from innate elementary programs for movement of body and arms. This doesn't mean or require that any point in the history of a human group there must have been a developed gestural language as a precursor to spoken language. An appropriate word for an object can be generated simply by imagining how an object might be physically represented or by concentrating on the visual perception of the object and transferring this imagined or visual motor pattern to form an articulatory gesture and so constitute an appropriate word. So we come to stage seven. We now have arrived at a set of speech sounds forming a word which matches the object, a word which is appropriate in the way indicated for the object to which it refers. So how does an infant acquire the word for a visual object on hearing it? From the motor theory of speech perception developed at the Haskins Speech Laboratories, the hearing of a word by an adult is perceived in terms of the motor program required to produce the word. The word is cross-modally, across modes, transformed into the articulatory motor program for producing the word. Similarly, for the infant hearing a word, the word is heard as cross-modally transformed uh, 
from an auditory to a motor pattern. There are well-known examples of cross-modal transformation in the brain by infants, notably the transformation which must take place when an infant reproduces in its own face the facial expression of an experimenter. So see the familiar illustration which follows of a very young child doing this. This was uh, 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 photographed by Adam Meltzoff, and he's the experimenter here. He's uh, uh, different f facial expressions, a uh, uh, tongue protruding, mouth open, mouth closed, and so on. Uh, and the child reproduces the facial expressions of the experimenter uh, quite exactly. And this even at amazingly young ages, such as seven days old. So, so this is evidence of transferring vision by the infant into movement of its face. The infant in this series of experiments saw and reacted to the different patterns of the experimenter's face. It did this by using its eyes to scan the differing facial shapes in the way I earlier described. From these rapid scans, the infant's brain constructed motor representations, distinct neural network patterns, which matched were appropriate for the different facial shapes. These motor patterns were then available to allow the infant to reproduce the facial patterns of the experimenter. In much the same way, the motor program in the infant's brain generated by hearing a particular word, a particular sequence of speech sounds, matches the motor program it has already acquired as a neural representation for the object from the visuo-motor processes involved in perceiving the object. As we recognize a visual object by reacquainting ourselves with the motor shape of the object, so the infant recognizes the motor structure of the word for the particular object in the language it is acquiring. The two fit together, are associated together neurally. This is how the infant acquires the word and its meaning. The word and meaning are linked together. In Wittgenstein's terms, coming back to my original uh, reference, the word when heard by the infant falls into the mould constituted by the neural representation of the object. In Chomsky's terms, the infant acquires the appropriate label for the concept of the object, a label which is not random or arbitrary, but designed to match the motor shape of the object to which it refers. The label is a neural structure. And now, uh, I haven't uh, in been able to include the full content of my web page uh, uh, about the acquisition of language by children set out above. Uh, there are a whole uh, set of uh, sections which I haven't been able to cover. Action word acqu acquisition by children, the acqu acquisition of words by children for things perceived by other senses than vision or action organization. The acquisition of closed class words, that's function words, grammatical words like uh, to and from and so on. Acquisition of sentence structure and so on. And also, I uh, haven't been able to include the very important notes I attached to my paper on motor theory, articulatory gesture, motor equivalence, Kant's categories and, uh, and their relation to function words, word and concept cortical topology, vision and thought, and bibliography and references. <laughs>